Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Everything OneNote. Um, today we're going to look at another way we can use OneNote for mathematics. Um, and today we're going to look at specifically index notation. So what we want to do is I'm here in the insert tab, okay, at the very top there. And there are two crucial math tools in here. So one called math and one called equations on the bar right there at the top. Now, what I want to do is because I want to write an index notation, and this is for typing, obviously, if you're using a stylus, you just write it with your stylus. Okay, but in this case, we want to type. So if I click here on equations, you're going to notice straight away here, it goes type, you know, type your equation here. But sometimes we need to look for a specific structure, and you can kind of see the ones I've been using recently there already. But what I want to do here is I want to click structures. Okay, now what you'll notice down, there'll be a column here on the left of your structures of all the different ones that you can choose from. And in this case, I kind of just want to look for this script here. And I'm looking for all of these kind of super or subscripts that are available to me. In this case, I would just want to use this kind of basic index notation one. So I'm going to click on it. And you'll notice here on my actual page that it's changed. So what I can do then, if I click the first little box, you know, I can write something, um, you know, if we go nine and we click the second box to the power of four, okay, it's written my index notation there for me. Um, if I close down the equation tool, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. I might have the students responding to some, some work, some questions that I've actually written in my OneNote, um, and they can type it in. It's nice and neat, it's tidy, it looks perfect, let's be honest. Um, we can take it one step further, okay, and we can use the math tool that is there as well. If students need, need help, okay, or they basically kind of need a calculator, or, you know, um, they kind of want to, what I'm gonna show you at the very end, which is really cool, test themselves even further. So let's start off with kind of helping us to solve this. So if I kind of highlight the question here, or the um, nine to the power of four, and I click over here, top right again at maths. So I'm gonna click that. You're gonna notice it'll come up and we'll go, yep, that's exactly it. I can select an action. Now what I want to focus on today is this ability to evaluate. So if I click evaluate, okay, there's my answer. It solved it for me. But I can also kind of ask it to kind of what was the solution that you used. Let's just move me over to the other side there. Um, and it's saying that, you know, I had to calculate 9 to the power of 4 to get 6,561. Okay. Students can open that in immersive reader if they need help with particular specific words and so on and so forth. The cool thing here is that students can create a practice quiz. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this little button here called generate a practice quiz. So if I click that, it's going to start using a little bit of AI and talking to Microsoft Forms and it says it's going to generate a quiz. So in this case, I'm going to, you know, you can, I think you can change this up to 20 at the moment, you know, so I can come in here, it always defaults to three, you know, maybe I'll change it to five. That's what I've asked the students to do. And I can go generate my quiz. Now, if we give that a little bit of time to think about it, it's going to put this little link in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this down on the right. I'm going to just zoom out a bit here because it's kind of the form is a bit bigger. Not that far, Nathan. There we go. And this is what it's done. It's, as I said, it's used a little bit of AI and it's made for me a mass practice quiz. There'll always kind of be multiple choice questions, you know, and if I just, I'm just going to rush through this and just pick the last one for every one of them. There we go. And I can go submit. Okay. It will say, thank you. Your response was submitted. And then you can kind of click to, you know, do another response if you want to do it again, or I can kind of click here to view results. And I didn't do very well. I only got 20% right. Um, so I've got them all wrong except for one, but you kind of get the gist of it. The great thing about this is if you um, are an avid user of student review is that you can kind of go through and just see their results and how they're done for each one. Um, if you don't know how to use student review, highly suggest have a look. Um, there should be a video up there soon if it's not there on how you can review through students' work. 
Okay, that's kind of a nice little brief introduction of how to kind of use index notation and generate a practice quiz in OneNote. Hope you find it useful. We'll see you again soon. Cheers.